We're back with Emily Tish Sussman, Democratic strategist and host of Your Primary Playlist, and Liz Harrington, RNC National Spokeswoman. Thank you both again for being here on Rising. All right, let's preview the second night of the Democratic debates. Hold on, hold on, before, yeah. before we do that, yeah. I, I'd ask one question yes. for Emily before we go. Under that, I have a suspicion that there's a there's a low prop low probability that any candidate can do something that's going to make big news, but there's a high positively there's a high probability that somebody can do something that's going to make big news on the bad side, a negative thing, and so you have a much greater risk of doing something that will be in the negative highlight reel, and that might live for a long time. Oh, that's interesting. I was I I was with you until we got to that point. Yeah. I think that's true. I think this is a lot of pressure. A lot of these campaigns know. Look, if you don't make the debate, you're out. Right. So like. If they can't raise enough money after this debate to make it to the next one, you're basically not running for president. So a negative, there's a lot of pressure on them. Like a Rick Perry moment, somebody who can't remember like their I can't remember form. the third one. Right, <laughs> right, so, right and then you, the but then you could apparently become the head of the agency. So <laughs> it, not, it's not all negative for you. But, um, True story. True story. but I actually think that you're right in that it's nearly, the, the bar is nearly impossible for anybody to have like a breakout great moment. I think the segments are too short. I think there's too many people. I think there's going to be too much fatigue. So I kind of think we just have to accept that, like it is what it is. Yeah. Well, that's, I don't know about that because Liz, I mean, President Trump, he was on the stage with what, 16 different people, it completely dominated the stage. I mean, the ratings were crazy. And it really was like him at that center. This is, this is very much what I see in this debate. It's like the same thing, except very different people in the center. Joe Biden is right there. He's got to defend his status. And everything that we've seen based on what he's been doing, I'm not sure if he has what it takes in order to combat, because literally everybody is going to be swinging at him, right? That's right. right. Yeah. And he, yeah, that second night's going to be tough for him. Yeah. yeah. President Trump, when he was running, was the front runner, and he never relinquished that status mm -hmm. once he had it. And I don't think the same, you've already seen Biden's numbers falling, because this is his third time running for president. He's never made it out of Iowa before. Right. And now he's riding off the coattails of Barack Obama. But what has he himself accomplished in 44 years right. in the swamp? And he's, we've already seen his weakness and waffling and uh, catering to the far left and saying, oh, never mind that for three decades I said uh, I'm personally pro-life, but I'm not going to uh, impose my views on others. I'm going to call for taxpayer-funded abortion. We've already seen where is his conviction. We don't see it. And so he's a very weak front runner. And it'll be interesting to see because he's never been a strong candidate. Well, it's funny because we're still talking about Joe Biden, but we shouldn't forget everybody else who's on the stage in the Democratic debate. I mean, even in the first one, we didn't talk about obvious, the obviously biggest one on the contender, Elizabeth Warren. How is it? How is it going to be for her, Emily, up on that stage? She is representing this kind of Bernie coalition. She's she's doing very well amongst educated white liberals, but. Is she going to have problems, and is it is it possible that she proposed the decriminalization of the border just a couple just the night before the debate in order to save herself from any of the possible attacks for not being too far on the left? She is the yeah. candidate that has done the best mm -hmm. during this entire primary season. Like she's the only candidate that I've seen who actually the narrative around her has entirely changed. Mm -hmm. Like the narrative around her when she first announced, I mean, she announced and then she, she went from a DNA off. test. That was yeah, like horrible. It was a little bad. A little yeah, bad. <laughs> like, yeah, but also it was sort of like, oh, the slow start of yeah. Elizabeth Warren. Yeah. Right, like one thousand twenty-four. Right, exactly. Yeah, it was sort of like a hum drum, and now it's like, oh, she has a plan. She has a plan for that. Right. Her wonkiness. I think. I think she's sort of married. Um, I don't know if it will take her all the way, but it could. That she appeals to a lot of the Bernie, and then we see that actually the narrative we're not talking about enough is the loss of support right. of Bernie supporters, true. and how a lot of that is moved to her, but also a lot of people liked Hillary Clinton. They liked a woman who was wonky and in the weeds. And I think she represents a lot of that for a lot of people. Yeah. Here's what I would say if I was Elizabeth Warren. You guys are going to attack her on the Native American thing and come at her a bunch of stuff. I would say you could spend a lot of time talking about me and my family, or we could spend a lot of time talking about you and yours. I think yeah. after that, we move on to the Democratic agenda. How do Republicans do that when, uh, for most American working class families, Donald Trump has not delivered what he promised. I don't think that's true at all. Look at the economy. Look at the historically low unemployment for every single demographic. Um, I think you provided a much better answer that Elizabeth Warren has been unable to. She has a plan for that, but she doesn't have a plan for to answer why she lied about being Native American and why she allowed herself to be called 
Harvard Law's first yeah. woman of color to advance her career. It's just it's weird. embarrassing. It with she doesn't have an answer for it. I love it when the Republicans going to. Well, it's, it's just going weird. To, I mean, it yeah. really is going to hurt her. I love it when the Republicans try to be woke. <laughs> it's just, I do. It never works out. Like it always like she's rings trying, a She's trying to be authentic, and it's just weird. I mean, it's like why? Like why didn't you just admit? Like yeah, we had a family story. I was wrong. It's not hard. Well, like, she I did say that. She said. I mean, it took family, like twenty five years. This is what my family told me. This is like, what I always believed. It makes you know, no sense. She yeah, cannot answer the question. Well, when did yeah. you find out? When she went on that radio show with Charlamagne right, the God, right? He said, "Well, when exactly?" And she's uh. And he accused say, her of lying. Moves on. I mean, because uh, it's, it's right. a joke. Everyone right. knows she pretended right. to be it to advance her career. Well, it's well, the well, only explanation. Well, well, I think we're going to have a lot of time to talk about how little the president has done and also how little the <laughs> how president... Little? How Doing little? economy, 3.2% growth? To say, how little the president has to 12 say for, $1, about $1, all, average the, tax cut? all the Are people who have come out against all the things that he's done bad his entire life, not just claiming something that's not true about his heritage, but claiming everything that's not true about his entire career and how much money he's worth and everything else. But segue. we're going to talk about Beto, <laughs> Beto O'Rourke, yeah. who is also on the stage. And uh, I also heard in South Carolina, there are a lot of people down there who think that he's not done yet. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, we're not really yeah. ringing endorsements. Yeah, I mean, people really liked him as the next senator from Texas, and it just hasn't translated for him. Did he I blow think, it by not coming out immediately and getting in the presidential race? Like, should he have just gotten in in December or January when everybody was pining? When for there him? was still some momentum around him? Yeah. Probably. Yeah. He kind of got lost in the fray. Um, and then there was a little bit, people felt like there were some missteps. I actually don't think that, I don't feel like there were, but I think the narrative around him is there were some missteps around his rollout. And then he kept it very low key, keeping it grassroots to show that he was, you know, listening to people. Um, but, you know, without the money, you don't have an operation, right? And so it's yeah. not rolling in the way that it did before. Um, these formats are going to be hard for him. He just speaks in sort of strange sentences sometimes. Is it the rollout, or is it just that he finally has to compete against other Democrats, and so people are giving a little bit more scrutiny to what he's actually saying, which is nothing from my perspective. Yeah, I feel yeah. bad yeah. for Robert Francis O'Rourke. Yeah. Mayor yeah. Pete kind of came along right. and stole his, his thunder. Shit. He's yeah. more woke than Big yeah, right. is. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, voters like a winner, and he lost. Mm -hmm. I mean, what are you running on? You right. couldn't get the job done, even if it was in a red state. What, you're not in Congress anymore either. So he talks about tearing down walls and addressing the situation on the border. Well, you could actually do something if you were still in Congress, yeah, at least. But right. you're out of a job and you're out standing on tables and being weird. Well, I, his wife's worth a couple hundred million. So right, <laughs> right. I will yeah, actually, exactly. It is actually, funny that people say yeah. standing on tables is like the worst thing you can say. Yeah, but it's <laughs> weird. It's, it's, again, it's I mean, just really, unsanitary. The president's been accused of rape. <laughs> you know what I mean? Where are you going to stand? Okay, wait, wait. We have to give everybody fair time here. So we got Jay Inslee, Amy Klobuchar, Tim Ryan. Any takes whatsoever? Because I really don't have any. Well, I... <laughs> Wait, yeah. okay, so one last thing on Beto, who actually does have the most expansive democracy reform package, which I think is very interesting and pushing the boundaries in a lot Fair of point. ways. Um, Jay Inslee is running on climate. He will bring it up. It'll be a very big issue, it, um, both because the Everglades are on fire, because Miami is about to be underwater, mm -hmm. um, but also because climate is now no longer seen as single issue and single issue voters. It's pervasive in so many places like public health, national security, and immigration. It's growing crisis. Um, growing crisis. So Jay Inslee will have a lot to say about that and maybe distinguish himself. Um, Amy Klobuchar will try to highlight herself as being the centrist candidate that is really connected to Midwest values. I would guess she probably says something that appeals directly to Iowans. Uh, Tim Ryan will be the factory working class guy. That's my tower <laughs> Boom, 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 boom. I love it. Uh, anything, anything to add on that list? That covers anything it pretty whatsoever. well. All I don't right. think yeah. any of them have a chance. <laughs> All, right. All right. Thanks, guys. Fun. We really appreciate it. Thank you for being here. Yeah. Coming soon to a C-SPAN near you, the Mueller Report, the second part, yeah. the public testimony edition, and the White House officially has a new press secretary. And more news from the border that's right before we go.